Rottnest is a small island located 12 kilometers off the West Australian coastline, dread the opposite Perth. It's about 4 kilometers by 12 kilometers in size. It's a lazy play playground for Perth residents. Many small vessels have been lost here because of the vicious coral reefs that surround the islands on all sides. In fact, between six and 10,000 years ago, Rottnest was actually connected to the mainland. The early traders were the Dutch Indian Company, which in the 1600s rode the Roaring Forties from South Africa to reach Indonesia and Jakarta. Unfortunately, a number of these ships ended up on the West Australian coastline. I'm not sure if any left their house on Rocknest. The first uh, real discoverer was Domingue, who charted the island and named the Quakas. Since his time, there's been many shipwrecks, particularly in the 1800s, but surprisingly, even into the 1900s. There's a substantial list of these wrecks. This list is highly edited. Who knows, there may have been four or 500 wrecks in total, and this is only a small fraction. It's amazing how many ships ended up on the coral reefs of Rottnest Island over the years. What we'll do is just take a look at one ship in particular, the city of York, an iron bar lying in 800 meters of water. It even rated a mention in the New York Times magazine with the information reported on the underseas telegraph in Morse code. August 12, 1899 is the newspaper entry. And apparently it's possible to still dive on the ship as this photograph shows. There was almost a thousand ton iron bark to the reef on its way from San Francisco to Fremantle. The three mass was almost 70 meters long. It was built in 1869 in Glasgow. It had been at sea for 90 days and got caught in a heavy winter storm and gale and ended up being beached. Unfortunately, there was quite a loss of life. He never did. I haven't scuba dived on the wrecks myself but it does look like fun. This map shows the location of some of the wrecks, including the Miraflores and the city of York. If you like scuba diving, diving for wrecks around Rottnest could be a lot of fun, as can snorkeling to look at the many tropical fish who ride the Lewin current south from the tropical waters of the north. A number of other wrecks that Ray mentioned in the museum is the Macedonian, where they actually salvaged an old brass diving helmet. And this is still on display at the museum. They also have a number of other artifacts bought up from the wrecks over the years, which are still on display. One of the problems for many of the wrecks in the 1800s was the lack of telephone communication. At that time, they used signal flags, and even during the day, a heliograph, sending Morse code by sun flashes. This interesting wreck actually found 303 shells uh, from, I guess, a Lee Enfield rifle. It's remarkable how well they've survived since, I think, 1886. 
Here's an actual wreck that you can see from the shore. I don't know whether it's the Lady Elizabeth, the Raven, or the Shark, but all these boats have gone onto the wrecks in this area. There doesn't really seem to be much left. To stop the wrecks, a pilot station was set up at Rottnest during, uh, well, beginning in 1848 until about 1903. This was in addition to the heliograph station and the signal flags. Here was the signal flag building located near Bathurst Point. The heliograph actually lasted for 20 years of service. A history of the pilot service. Because of the number of men in the pilot service, quite a few houses were built on the shores using, in many cases, Aboriginal penal settlement labor. I suspect there's at least five or six houses built for use of the pilot service residents. And they're in remarkably good condition today. I believe it's possible to rent them out for the night. In many cases, I think they acted as pilots to guide the ships from Rottnest into the Fremantle port safely. Here's a map showing the buildings of the pilot service along the coastline. And some of the buildings that survive today. They are picturesque. The original pilot house boathouse. Lighthouses were a very important addition to ensure the safety of ships. The first lighthouse was built by convict labor in the center of the island, and as shown here. It was replaced in 1896 by a much larger, more modern lighthouse. The first house apparently was completed in 1849, with the new tower completed in 1896, and the old lighthouse dismantled sometime thereafter. However, with the wreck of the York, a second lighthouse was constructed at Bathurst Point near Thompson Bay. Let's uh, look at some of the uh, photographs of the large lighthouse. It's called Wajamup Lighthouse today to celebrate the Aboriginal heritage to the area. And it's quite a nice drive up the hill to the highest point to admire the view. A submarine cable was stopped off at Rocknest and pushed on to the mainland, giving more reliable communication. The Bathurst Lighthouse was built in 1900 with the tower painted white with a gold lantern dome. The light was one of four erected in West Australia around 1910. Today, it operates automatically. I do appreciate your company on this quick visit to Rottnest, shipwrecks, and the history of lighthouses on Rottnest Island. I wish you a very pleasant day.